No, it looks like that key is wildered out. That sucks. That sucks a lot. Yeah, because now I gotta pull pull this out, strip the bearings off of there, and probably weld that up and then recut it. I mean it's not the end of the world, don't get me wrong. It's not throw away, but I fuck I gotta weld her up and uh Yeah. Recut the keyway. get it up, it should stay. Oh, I think when that swings though, it's gonna hit the bottom of this. We gotta give her some slack. Some of that. Then we got the big old Milwaukee, three quarter, hammer slammer. Oh. This thing's got power galore. Lock nut, inch and five sixteenths. They got keyed slots so that this bolt doesn't spin inside there. So they got that key to go in that keyed slot. These blades, they've seen some better days. And then it's shouldered so that it allows that blade to spin. And it's fine thread, lots of stuff. <laughs> That's a little cotter pin <laughs> for this job. Wow. Yeah. I'm gonna go to the other side and I'm gonna unbolt the four bolts that hold that whole flange assembly on there. And then I'll tap this that way. And then we'll grind all this boogery weld flat. Oh, you know what? I shouldn't say boogery, that's weld held. And then we'll go and flatten this all out. And I'll put my kneeling pad on the other side in case that disc falls. I'll put some cardboard there too. I gotta get that off of there. Cause there's nuts back there. We're gonna tap on this lightly. Ah, uh, that's kinda what I figured as well. Shoot. Oof, I don't know if she's moving. After I'm done whaling on it, I'm probably gonna need new bearings. I wonder if I could go in here and pull right on that. Just hook there. That's a solid piece of steel. Yeah, that's a solid piece of steel. So I think what I'm gonna do, oh, as soon as I get this off there, I'm gonna drill and tap in here for half inch. And then what I'll do, I'm gonna put a center in this guy, and then I'll pull it out that way. That's what I'm gonna do.
that should have come off. So I can't get the other side off. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come through, I'm gonna file all of this stuff off. I'm gonna clean this up and I'm gonna try and push this shaft out that way. Cause that's a taper that goes on there and that taper is pretty tight. I, I got a pretty rack tight and then I heated the daylights out of it. So even if I have to destroy the bearings, I'll get that shaft to come out this way. Then I'll put that in the press and push that out of there. I got it off by tapping it out of the bearing race on the front. The whole thing slid out. You can see the shaft and you can see that this piece, this big heavy piece here is it's bold like this. It'll work out great when we put it on the brake press or when we put it on the press because as we try to press this guy out, what I believe has happened is it has, when it bent, it went ahead and it really grabbed the bottom of that taper. So we're gonna put it on the press. We're gonna load her up with all 15 ton. I don't even know if that's gonna be enough. I may have to get in there and really heat the daylights out of this cherry reddit, only in a spot, probably right in here, and get that baby to bowl back up. That's going to be nerve wracking as well because I don't want to ruin any of the threads. So I'll probably put the castle nut back on, put a plate or a plug or something on there so they can all share that load. <laughs> We're getting there. This thing is all good fun to fix. Oh, just, just fits. get something underneath there. I'm putting padding underneath. If that shaft comes shooting out of there, we will want to be, we'll want to at least protect some of the stuff, seal diameter and such. I think it's going to press out pretty easy once we get that bend proper. But I also got the nut on so it shouldn't go shooting out of there. This is a, this is a 20 ton press so we're going to give her all 20 ton I bet. We're getting a lot of pressure. Well, it's got to come out. It can't not come out. But we're loading her up with everything she's got. Now I'm going to just throw heat in there. We're going to give it a little more. And now we're going to give her some heat. horsepower and then we could straighten this I'm not worried about that <laughs> we're probably destroying the shaft and I'm gonna have to do some remaking That's why you put something spongy. You look at that, it cut a darn near perfect hole in there where it hit. It came down hard, really hard. There's a lot of pressure. You can see how discolored the uh, taper is. 
So I had plenty of heat in there. I, I probably overheated it. Um, obviously, we're going to do all the bearings. We'll clean this up, polish it up. Sometimes that's what it takes. So I did put a gigantic bend the other way in the blade holder, but that we can push out. That's easy to bend back. All right, I got to wait for that to cool. I'll get it all cleaned up, get the bearings pushed off, and then we'll go over to the, the, the shaft itself. <laughs> that took a lot of pressure. All right, well, we have some bad news. This shaft, you can see it's all fretted up. It's been working in there. Uh, and this bore, so it should be one inch 375, and that's no good. So today, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take, put this in the lathe, we're gonna straighten it out and get a good diameter on there, a straight diameter, and we're gonna measure it. Then we're probably going to turn this until it cleans up, and then we're gonna determine whether we're gonna make a bushing or we're going to weld this and then turn it down. Today, I'm turning this down to 1.375. That will be my bearing diameter. Then I'm going to open this bore up a little bit more and I'm gonna make a sleeve and then weld it into place and then turn this to maybe 1376 just so that it's a slip fit between my shaft and here. And I have my bearings and my seals so the plan for today is to get the shaft done, get this sleeve made, and get this assembly all together. And after that, we'll see where we go from there as far as the blade that connects to the bottom here. Uh, that needs some welding on the bushing. That's everything we need. I didn't use these numbers. I just got the dimensions of the old one. The old bearing was an NTN. I crossed it to a Timken. And then we just got federal moguls uh, seals. This is now 1.625 in diameter. My other dimension is 1.375. So I need to make a spacer that's going to be a quarter, basically a quarter inch to take up. So an eighth on either side. So we're gonna make it like an uh, inch and a quarter. Weld it in place and then we'll go through and we'll open it up All right, we got to turn this down to one inch 625 and it's at two and a half. So we need to do it for an inch 
and 100 thousandths, which is the thickness of that um, pulley. We need to first go about 800 thousand, so that's gonna be, oh wow, if I take 100 thou a crack, that'd be a lot. All right, let's boom this down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, let's take a look at this. So this guy I've got undersized. This is going into the here. We're chamfered up. Then once I get this welded in, now I made these grooves in here to weld to the hub. Then this shaft is gonna go in here. So then I'll have to turn this to my one inch 375. And then we'll be good. So we're just gonna make this a slip fit not only am I going to weld in this chamfer, I'm also going to fill each of these grooves that I cut with weld. So one on each side. So that's the next step. We'll weld this out and then we'll put it on the lathe and turn it down and we'll come back then. Look, like. Look at how good we got it. That thing is running super true now. Timkin, we got new seals, national oil seals, and I resurfaced, this was TIG welded, and then I cut a new keyway in there, key seat. Now we're ready to build this, this hub. This will go into the housing, this is the top, and this is the bottom, so we have to put this shaft in this way. So this cup will go into here, like so, and then this bearing will go in like this, like that. So this first bearing has to go on like so. And let's see. No, it's not gonna allow us to just push it down. Okay, let's try and pound this on. We're just, we're gonna stay on the inner race. This is an Allen wrench softer. My good buddy Mikey, he used to call this a torquing tool. Let's see how this goes. Yeah. Then this guy goes on there, like so, and this, this is going to go in this way, right? And then that pulley will be up there, so I should probably get this inner race in there. All right, we got her set all the way in. Did it the same way, just pounded her down. All right, and that's be that. So this race is gonna go in this way, and then this bearing is gonna drop on like so. Then it will all be sandwiched together like a wheel bearing. And you can hear how it changed in tone, so we know that's down there. So now, we can slide this guy in. Okay, put that guy there. Perfect.
So now what I'm gonna need to do is get the keyway cut to fit in here and then get the pulley on and then I can crank that down and I'll check to see what our float is. And it should look good. New bearings, new seals, <laughs> a new, uh, a new uh, shaft diameter. And we also, remember this thing was all wobbled out. It's not wobbled out anymore. Well, I wait for hardware. I'm gonna just get myself a key made in here, round the corners off and we'll make ourselves a nice key for there. All right, there we have it. Key is in and looking good. Today I'm figuring out whether I'm going to put preload into this bearing assembly or if I'm gonna put some float. That's tight, that part's tight. There's no preload. Or that's preloaded, I just don't know how much. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn a little bit off of this face. So if I take a little bit off here, I'm gonna sneak up on it, I'll take a little bit off, check it, take a little bit off and check it until I get maybe one or two thou with the nut tight. Then what I can do is I can make, or I can put shim stock back here on this, slide it over and put shim stock at say five thou. Then I know I have three thousandths of of load, preload. This is spinning at 984 RPM. It's still arbitrary, see? I could spin it just fine. And if it were under preload, it wouldn't spin. So it may be just at, it may be just at zero or one preload. I'm gonna pull another five out of here. I feel a little rocking back and forth, which means we have some float now. I only took off five thou, so I'm kind of a, I kind of should have left it the way it was on that last one. Now it's super, now it spins like super free. We're gonna put this on and we're gonna do the best we can to get a decent reading on flow. There it is. So it looks like we got anywhere between two and three thou. So I'm gonna put a 5,000 shim in there. That's gonna give me 2,000 preload. And we're gonna let her rip at that. I think we're gonna be fine. Now all I gotta do is make a 5,000 shim for right on here. And then that's gonna press against here. And that's gonna load up our assembly. This will put me in a safe, a safe situation. So we're pretty good there. So now that's how that's gonna go. Still spins nice, nice and free. No wobble, no jumping around. We're good to go. That's it for this portion. Now we'll get the other side, we'll get the blade, uh, the blade assembly put together on the backside on that taper. And we're damn near ready to start this baby up. I'm excited. All right, that's enough. Well now, do I weld it into place or do I bolt it? This is so thin. If I weld it here, plug weld it here, plug weld it here, weld it underneath, I think it'll be okay.
Now that's galvanized, so I'm not gonna wanna sit here and suck up that fumes for too long. And it's so hot outside. I think what I'll do is just put a fan to blow across my breathing space. Well, we got everything done. We got that pulley and the drive shaft all good. The motor running better, still spins up the blade so we just keep our feet out from underneath and we got a new hitch installed. Let's get the wheeler, let's take this thing for a test. Oh, I gotta change that ball though. Look at this. And I can go like this. I knew that tractor would come in handy for something. Well, we gave the shakedown on the Rhino, the PM42. Uh, this is all just dry cattails. It's not really good on the tractor. The tractor's so low. Um, it'll be way better on the four-wheeler, so I'm gonna make a drop hitch for it. It works really good. I hit some really heavy spots. It didn't bog down, and the blades kept going. But it's really wet in here, so it'll be way better with a drop hitch on the four-wheeler. Yeah, this thing's gonna work great up in the Northwoods when I'm doing food plots and stuff. Once we get this cut and tamed to where we need it, then I'm gonna just take it up north and leave it. All right, make sure you stay tuned to What's Next Garage for more repairs and go to What's Next Outdoors to see this baby in action doing food plots and cutting some trails. Today's the day we're gonna put this two inch receiver to make this more versatile.